Yeah, I like fishing for sand bass pretty much any time of the year. And that's the neat thing about them. They're available almost any time of the year. Summertime on top, springtime, they're certainly up shallow spawning. And then I'm catching them now in the fall. and It's, it's a lot of Let's fun. Go. So we're gonna fish Lake Latonka this evening. Hoping that uh, the sand bass and maybe even some saw guy are in. Every once in a while I'll catch a small mouth if we're lucky. Buddy John will join me here in a little bit. A lot of people by now have pretty much finished up fishing. They go to football and kids get in school and that sort of thing. But fall for me is the best time to fish. I, I nearly have the lake to myself every night. And, uh, uh, the fish are still biting, that's the great thing, especially sand bass, they, and I think of them kind of as a fill-in fish, and you know, when, it, when nothing else is biting, you can almost always count on a sand bass to bite. Lake Latonka is our oldest reservoir in Oklahoma. It was built first in 1906, the dam was extended a couple of times, the last time was in the 1950s, and uh, that makes it 2,400 acres now. And it's a fairly clear lake for the western part of the state, set in the mountains and near the refuge, in the Wichita Refuge. And uh, it's just a nice lake to, if, even if you're not catching fish, it's a nice place to be every evening. Not biting yet. Not sure if they will bite in this north wind, but I'm about to go over to that other point and try it out. Yep, Lake Latonka has good populations of sand bass, of course, and catfish, and we've caught some 10-pound uh, plus bass in this lake, so it's trophy bass lake sometimes. And then last year we got a smallmouth bass, a state record smallmouth bass out of Lake Latonka. So it's had some, uh, it's, it's an old lake, but it's still got some good things going on. I've tried it a few times with the north wind blowing in, and you'd think it'd be better, you know, being sand bass and all, but uh, Believe it or not, I've had better luck with the south wind blowing away from us. But tonight it's not too bad, so. I've been, you know, doing good here and here both. It really doesn't get much better anywhere else than right here. When I'm fishing for sand bass, I'm looking for a couple of things. Wind is very important. Uh, they tend to respond to windy points and, and windy areas because that's where the bait are, are uh, more vulnerable. Sand bass are more active there and so I target those areas. I've been catching them though here lately even in calm water. Uh, but it's important I, I get there a little early and I don't catch fish until really the sun starts setting. So evenings and mornings and then cloudy days are really good too. What color you got on? In Latonka, it's got fairly clear water and decent sand bass population. And so I use things that, that look really natural, like this uh, sassy shad that's kind of a gray and black with a glitter in it, or this three inch curly tail grub that's gray, smoke colored. But, um, you know, other lakes that, that have muddier water or, or when the wind's blowing, I'll go with something that's brighter that they can really see, like a chartreuse bait or this uh, clown colored grub. And uh, in turbid water, like say at Thunderbird or um, Carl Blackwell, then you want to go with a dark bait, something really uh, uh, dark black, red, something like that, that uh, really shows contrast against that muddy water for them. There you go. You keeping fish tonight? So that's my favorite color bait right there. I've tried um, that pearl gray, I mean that, uh, I've tried that gray. Went back to the pearl and that's what I caught it on. John's catching his on clown bait though, so, or clown colored stick bait, so. Catch them on a lot of things.
You want that? There you go. Now I catch it. Now I get it. Where's he? Where'd he go? <laughs> yeah, guys, this is uh, one of the city of Lawton lakes. The city of Lawton owns Ellsworth and Latonka. We're on Latonka, and besides your state fishing permit, you have to have a city permit as well. And, uh, but it's pretty cheap, a dollar a day or so. What is it, two dollars a day, one dollar a day to fish here? Two dollars a day or Ten dollars for the whole year, so it's pretty reasonable. There's not much technique to it, you know, I'm just throwing out as far as I can. This is a seven foot rod built by my friend Kurt Kuklinski. Uh, got a little light action on the end of it, but a decent backbone. Throw out as far as I can. It's probably four or five feet deep out there. Sometimes I'll let it sink to the bottom, then start reeling it in, especially if I'm after saw guy. Other times the, the fish are right there and they'll hit it as soon as it hits the top of the water. Got one? Nice. They came back, I guess. That's, that's why I like sand bass, is because it doesn't matter how big they are, they'll put up a pretty good fight. That one's a little bigger, mine is anyway. They're starting to worry me there. All right. You ready, Cal? You want that? Go get him. Get him. Where's he? Where'd he go? It's hard on the spur of the moment to get a, a buddy like John to come out. He, he comes with me once in a while. I get somebody to come out. My son comes out now and then. But the dog's always ready to go. You know, it doesn't matter. She's always ready to go fishing with me. Of course, she's always up for a walk. But then she likes she likes the fish too. I mean, she gets excited when I catch them. I kind of play with her when when I catch one, throw it back. She chases it, snorkels for it. It's kind of fun to watch her. I don't know, I just enjoy having somebody out with me. She's, she's what it takes sometimes. The dog is ready for two things, food and a walk. And this is how we both get what we need. She, she gets to walk over the hill and, and uh, gets to run around down here at the lake. And I get to go out and catch a few fish. And even these small sand bass, you know, they feel good on that rod. There's kind of an example of, of a, a little bit of a falsehood among anglers, and we kind of put it out there too that any fish like this with broken lines is a hybrid. Well, that's, there's no hybrids in Lake Latonka, but that one's got some broken lines, and those are a result of injuries or uh, scratches and scuffs that they get early in life, and their, their uh, scales don't come back in the same pattern as they did when they were born. So. Even though they have broken lines, this is not a hybrid, and, and uh, a lot of people would think it, it is a small hybrid. You know, white bass is a fish that just about anybody can catch. And, and the good thing is, in most of our lakes, there is no limit for them. You can go out and enjoy <laughs> catching all you want, really, keeping as many as you want. And uh, they bite in a lot of situations, a lot of lakes, almost every lake has them. The only lakes where we have limits on them are the ones that have hybrids in them. And the reason is we want to preserve our hybrid fisheries and keep them, uh, allow them to grow as, as large as possible. In our lakes with hybrids, we have this 20 fish limit, five over 20, but all the other lakes that don't have hybrids in them, there's no limit on sand bass. If you're an inexperienced fisherman and you pull up something that looks like a hybrid or it could be a sand bass or striper, it's good to go to our fishing guide and get tips on how to identify each of those fish. But the only places you really have to worry about whether you're keeping the right ones or not are the lakes we stock hybrids in, and there's only a few of those around the state.